Okay, let's get this uh, party started, shall we? Uh, my name is Steve Patterson, and I'd like to uh, thank you all for showing up for my um, my webinar on uh, FX Street. And um, right now, we're going to just jump into this next topic that we're going to talk about, which is context is king. Profits come from thinking right. So, um, hey, Andy, thank you very much. And uh, we're currently w witnessing a liquidity camp. Well, that's more news driven. But anyways, well, let's not go into that too much. Uh, let's get the stuff out of the way. Okay, uh, disclaimer, yada, yada, yada. You guys all know the routine. Anything I say is not to be taken as uh, advice and Please make your own decisions on your own and don't sue me, yada, yada, yada. Okay, a uh, little bit about uh, me real quickly. Again, for those of you that don't know me, uh, I've got over 27 years of experience in the financial markets. Started out at the very, very bottom of the rung, worked my way up uh, to a broker. Now I'm an individual trader. Um, I also run managed accounts, do some private coaching, and uh, make my living from home going forward. Okay, profits come from thinking right. Okay. Ah, this is one of the most um this is one of the most interesting topics that I have to cover. And um again, I'm going to kind of um do all of my webinars in more of a lecture format. Uh, I seem to have gotten a lot of positive feedback from people they they tend to rather than me going through and you know coming up with you know do this do that I, I, I kind of prefer to handle it um, from an educational point of view um, kind of like a, a more interactive experience so I'm going to really try to um, answer questions as I go along um, because the real purpose of these webinars is to, you know, educate you guys and give you give you some type of knowledge, not just not me sit here and say, well, you know, here's what I do, right? And this is kind of this is kind of a, a an overall view of exactly what I'm talking about. Context is king, and I find that if you if you if you're trying to learn something, no matter what it is you're trying to learn, if you're more interactive in the process then I find the education becomes far more applicable to you, all right? Um, when I was first um, learning to read or learning to trade, you know, I uh, I bought all the books like everybody else. I still buy all the books. I'll, I'll still go and buy things. I still go and buy courses. It's funny. People laugh at me, but, um, you know, I, I'll still, if I see something from an educator out there that I think is useful, I'll go and buy it. You know, it's funny. I was just looking at some of, uh, I, I didn't know who Sam um, Sam was from Online Trading Academy, and just through my um, knowledge here of FX Street, I started watching some of his videos, and some of the stuff he had on there was pretty cool. And so, you know, I, I will go, if I'm so inclined, I will go and always continually educate myself. And I think it's the same as being a doctor or a lawyer. Um, you know, you've got to keep up to date with the law. You've got to keep up to date with how people are thinking, and particularly when you're trading liquidity, you want to keep up to date with what other traders are doing. It's very, very important to keep up to date with what other traders are doing. So putting it into a big context, getting back to learning. Um, whenever you're learning something, um, I, when I first learned to trade from a floor trader, um, he said to me, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you what I'm going to do, what to do, but I don't want you to do what I'm doing. I want you to make it your own. All right, and so this is kind of expands more on that topic, um, thinking right, right. And so, if someone were to come to me and say to me, you know, you know, Steve, um, you know, how do I become a, a professional trader, or whatever that means to that person, right? That means you know, making. Sorry, one sec, guys. Apologize. Uh, does that mean making a hundred thousand dollars a year? Does that mean making a million dollars a year? Does that mean being quant? Does that mean going and working at a bank? Does that mean going and um, 
you know, just being able to pay your bills? Well, my answer is always the same. And my answer is the reason why you're not a successful trader, um, if you're not or you're struggling or if you are, is because you're not thinking right. Okay? And what do I mean by that? That's a pretty bold and broad statement. What do I mean by not thinking right? Well, you're not thinking like a trader. So does that mean I go and buy some books on self-control and self-discipline and, um, you know, learn how to trade better? Um, you know, maybe it's my moving average crossovers that aren't working. Maybe it's my technical analysis that's not working. Um, maybe it's if I put this other indicator on or if I learn to read price action, if I go and study VSA, if I go and um, read everything about Wyckoff, if I study a turtle, um, if I take, you know, online trading academies or or Steve's uh, coaching program, is that going to help me become a better trader? And and see, this is where everybody gets lost. This is where the grand illusion comes in. Um, the grand illusion is it doesn't matter what you do. Okay, it doesn't matter what you do. For for a fun exercise. I once did this, and I'm going to challenge you all to do this as well, too. Um, just pop up uh, a chart, any chart that you want. We'll get to charts in a bit. And just put on four random lines, two above the market, two below the market. And I actually did this for, uh, I think it was about six months in total when I, when I tried it. I just put on two random lines anywhere on the chart, right? And I said, let this be support and resistance, okay? And you would be shocked. You would be shocked how often you would find support and resistance at at four random lines. Okay. And so why am I where am why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this because if four random lines can become support and resistance at any point in time, depending on on the the context in which you're thinking, then everything can work and everything can't work because it makes sense. Markets just move around and they're looking for liquidity and they spend a lot of time in one area and they move to another area but um, if you're looking at four random lines on a five minute chart uh, within the scope of your screen I guarantee you that there will be times when they act as perfect support and resistance as minor support and resistance so how do we make money right if if everything kind of works but doesn't because price oscillates back and forth uh, in various types of fashion, where does the money come from, right? Well, if you read the trading books and you, you know, you say, well, it comes from discipline and self-control. That's a bunch of hooey and hogwash because I have zero discipline and self-control. I'm, I'm not joking. I'm half Italian. I'm half Irish. I'm probably the most emotional guy you want to meet. Uh, I get I get really upset and really disturbed easily. Um, I react. I uh, I've done all kinds of crazy stuff emotionally, but yet it's not that's not where the profits come from when you're trading, in my opinion. I mean, I know there are people that have to have strict uh, discipline and self-control because you're trading a five-minute you're trading a moving average crossover and when that crossover happens or you're trading support and resistance and you've always got to take that support and you've always got to take that resistance well I've always I've always thought that was really stupid right because I've always believed the markets are billions of or billions but hundreds of millions of participants and on any one given day they're never going to be the same right um, for any of you that know poker I like to use this analogy because I'm also a poker player there are 52 cards in a poker deck and so therefore there's always a fixed outcome right and so that outcome can be always mathematically calculated because there's always going to be 10 people yada 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 there's always a probability and an odds well I think that when you try to do that with the market and that's what a lot of people are trying to do they're trying to fit the market into a box you are not thinking right you have failed to grasp the reality of what trading really is okay trading is nothing more if you if if you were to put a wiki, wikipedia definition of what a market's supposed to do a market is supposed to find liquidity and that's its primary job 
right? That's what it does. Everybody thinks that it does something else, but no. If, if, if you were an auctioneer, what's your number one job? Your number one job is to get the highest price for your product that you're selling so you can get the highest commission. And your job is to stimulate enough interest in that particular product, whether it be a car, whether it be a, you know, Michael Jackson's glove or whatever, um, your job is to stimulate enough activity. And when there is no activity, what do you got to do? You got to get people excited about it. And so that's exactly what the market does, except it works in both directions. It doesn't just, you're not just trying to bid something up. You're trying, you're also bidding something down. And so, um, when you really get your thinking right and when you change the way you're thinking, um, then you can begin to really see the market for what it is, which is really no more than a liquidity hunting machine. That's all it does, right? And, and how do we know that? Like markets don't stand still. So what they're going to do is facilitate order flow into um, supply or demand so that they can get the highest price or the lowest price for that particular object on that particular given time. Okay, I know that's kind of a hard concept to get your head around because, you know, there are other books out there and, you know, Wyckoff teaches supply and demand and supply and demand and supply and demand and, and you know, it's like going to the grocery store and, you know, blueberries, there's a, a flood in, uh, you know, in, in the blueberry country and blueberry prices go up. That's partially true, but it's not 100% true because the markets are so dynamic, especially the Forex markets are so dynamic that um, the fundamentals do come into play, but they come into play on the longer term perspective, uh, which really don't affect most of us as traders. They affect us kind of slightly intraday because we get news releases and, and reactions like we're getting right now, which are true supply and demand moves. Um, that that are moved by fundamental changes. But getting back, I don't want to get off too, uh, too far off, off topic. Profit come from thinking right. So let me move forward here. <clears throat> and this is where context is king. So everybody says to me, well, how do you make money? And if how do you think right? Okay, so what is thinking right? Thinking right to me, when you're looking at a chart, um, uh, I kind of covered this. Um, Covered that too. Oh, sorry, I'm getting way ahead of myself. Um, let me just get some charts up here. I got to turn this off and turn it on. All right. <clears throat> First of all, let me just stop here because I'm about um, one third of the way through. Does anyone have any questions about what I mean um, about? thinking right. First of all, I'll answer Magnet's question. Magnet asks, asks, asks me, um, this is very true, Steve, but don't you think there are specific areas that banks are buying and selling? Um, no, <laughs> I don't. I think particularly when you're dealing with a bank, which is basically just an order execution most of the time. Now, some banks do have um, um, uh, banks in particular, some banks do have trading desks that are um, made for speculation, but most of the time it's just order execution, okay? Market thinking or trader thinking. Boyke asks me, uh, market thinking or, tra or trader thinking? Um, not sure um, what you mean by that, by Boyke. But if there, so if there are any, maybe define that question a little bit more. Hey Keith, how you doing, buddy? Keith says, "Look left, think right." I love that. That's a great statement. So getting on to context, what exactly do I mean by context? All right, how do you think right as a trader? How do you think right as a trader? Okay, um, do you do you um, study this, study that. I think everything that you study and all the material that you read is all going to help you in one way, shape, or form. But I think the greatest thing that you can do as a trader 
is to get your head right, understand what a, what a market really is, and then understand, when you understand the dynamics of what a market really is, um, not just not just the, the book definitions, when you understand it on an internal level, then you'll come into zone with the market as, you know, Mark Douglas would say, right? Because a lot of the times I'm I'm kind of um, feeling the market, if you will. Um, a lot of it is they say, well, you got to develop your intuition, right? Well, that's again, intuition. How do you develop intuition, right? Um, that's a stupid thing to say. It's like, it's a, it's a complex problem that doesn't have a simple answer. But thinking in terms of context will help you develop intuition. So let me, let me get to some examples of what context is, okay? Let me just answer this question. Boyke asks, the thinking of the market the thinking of the market or of the trader, market psychology or trader psychology. Oh, okay, Boyke, I see what you're saying. It's all in your head, Boyke. It's just you. There's things we can't control. A lot of people will tell you, well, trade this pattern. Um, you know, multiple traders are looking at this particular thing, and therefore the psychology of the market is this. What a crock of nonsense. I'm sorry, but I just, I mean, I bought that stuff as much as everybody else, right? This is the flag. And so, therefore, the market w was moving up, and this flag is con trader consolidation, and the, there's a trader psychology that's going on in here. Yeah, of course there's a psychology that's going on in there, okay? There's a psychology of liquidity that's going on in there. That's about it, right? The, the market simply ran into an area where there was, there, where the, there was too much liquidity. It had to... Um, make a, it had to move back and had to reconsolidate before it could move higher, but not because Bob and Henry and Louis and Frank and Gary and Charlie were all um, were all doing whatever it is that they teach you that that pattern um, is supposed to represent as mass trader psychology. No, the market just ran into liquidity and it had to move to the downside until it found more liquidity and enough reason to go higher, okay? So I don't believe in trader or market psychology, so to speak. I think that's just, I think that's just something that you're, you're trying to put a label on something, okay, Boyke? Uh, Carlos asks, banks are buying, buying randomly, or are they also looking at areas of support and resistance and analyzing which ones are more likely to hold or not? Carlos, no, I don't, I don't, believe in particular banks. I don't particularly believe banks do that. Banks are, once again, order execution. They're basically just um, order fillers. They're not really um, thinking of exploitation, right? Okay. Um, so let me move forward here because I'm, I got, I'm about halfway through. Okay, so context, context, context. How can we start to think in terms of context, all right? Well, the way you think in terms of context is I'm going to use something as simple as candlesticks. Okay, let's say I would put up a candlestick chart here. Okay, and this is just a, a, a simple example of thinking in terms of context, and we'll, we'll I'll expand on it as I move around, but I'm going to start off with the basic. Okay, let me just get context. Let me get a candlestick here. Okay, so here's a basic candlestick chart. Okay. Um, I don't mind the questions, Beto. It's okay. Um, so here's a basic candlestick chart. Now, a lot of times people will say, well, you know, a doji is a reversal, right? So let's just look in terms of dojis, right? And, and you know, we have a little doji down here, and the market, sure, sure enough, did go up, but then came back down, right? So why did that particular doji fail? Well, it failed because it's not a doji. Okay, that's that's just something that's a label that you 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 put on something because price did something during that one hour period, but that's not a doji, that's just price movement. Now, if I were to see a price movement like this, 
on this particular, everybody can see what I'm pointing out, right? If I were to see price movement like this, I'm not thinking in terms of this is a doji. I'm thinking in terms of is this particular context relevant to what is transpiring as far as order flow is concerned, okay? So let's say I were look, looking for a liquidity run, right? And let's say I were to look at, or looking at support and resistance, if you will. And let's say I was saying, okay, you know what? Um, I believe that their market is going to be positive and we're going to move up and we're going to take out this particular high. Okay, yeah, I, I will, sorry. Try to get this big. I'm just randomly doing this, by the way, guys. This is not planned at all. This is just random stuff that I'm just doing. And I think it's important that I keep it random because I think I think if I come on here and show you perfect situations, you're not going to learn, right? So I can I can pretty much pop up any chart of anything and make sense of it. And that's what your goal should be. Your goal should be to make sense of any random uh, historical price movements. I don't even like to call them charts. I call them historical price movements. So let's say in this particular context, if I was looking to see if price could move higher, all right, from this particular area, all right, I would put this into the context, and Keith kind of said it a little earlier, what information do I know? Well, I know a little bit about what has been happening, all right, I know what has been happening over the course of, um, you know, the last um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about the last eight days, right? And so in this particular context, when I were to see this particular um, structure or this particular historical price movement, I might be able to say, okay, well, this, from this particular level, in this context, will price move higher? And sure enough, price did move higher in this particular, in this particular context. But let's take a look at another example where it didn't, right? And there's lots of them. Right, um, so let me just randomly go here. Okay, all right. Here's here's one right here where price ended up not moving higher because in this particular context, this candle did not have the same meaning. did all right and so therefore moving, higher, moving lower before we ended up moving higher again right now if you're thinking of whatever it is a candlestick chart an indicator cross um, if you're thinking um, that this is a reason to execute your trade um, you you've got it wrong because what you should be asking yourself is based upon the historical price move over this last hour in this particular context do I have the probability of doing that okay hold on a second uh, I got a little note here Ellen Steve I feel your material is more important than answering any questions as they come up I think questions should be answered at the end I'm not sure a lot of cases people's question will be answered during the presentation yeah that's fine Ellen that's fine it's just hard for me hard for me to get back to it sometimes um, I don't know if any of you have ever done a presentation, but um, it's not easy, um, trust me, <laughs> it's not easy to follow the flow of the questions and then also um, uh, remember what they are. So um, getting back to context, let's, let's stay on this topic because I only got about 20 minutes left. All right, because I want to move forward. Um, so here's how you think as a trader. You think in the context of the situation that you're trying to exploit. And so what are we trying to exploit? Well, people tell you that you're trying to exploit an edge. Well, what the heck is that? What's an edge, right? Um, an edge is where there's a market inefficiency. Well, what does that mean, a market inefficiency? Okay, so getting back to context, let's start building some context, okay? How do you think in terms of context? Well, once again, um, you have to 
begin to understand, understand that the markets move from one liquidity level to another liquidity level. They're constantly in search of orders. They're constantly in search of buyers and sellers. And yes, supply and demand dynamics are important because they do play into it. Liquidity runs are important because they do play into it, right? But what you're what you're trying to do is you're trying to get yourself out of um, you're trying to get yourself out of um, uh, out of box thinking, if you will. So let me give you an example. Box thinking is thinking in terms of simple things like support and resistance. I'm just going to make this a bit bigger here, okay? So I'm now looking at, let's take a look at the euro US dollar, okay? I'm now looking at a euro US dollar chart. Let's get this stuff off of here. And we see here, it would be very easy for me to try to um, literally put this in a box and say that we have resistance up here and we have um, we have demand down here because historically we have shown that significance okay now that's great if you want to think in terms of support and resistance that's that's fantastic i have no problem with you doing that i have no problem with you thinking of terms of higher highs lower high, lower lows lower highs all that stuff is all great and uh, even throwing on technical indicators is great but where you're going to start to make real consistent money is when you start to think in terms of, okay, how is this context important to the supply, to, to what I'm currently looking at right now, all right? So if we were going to be a support and resistance trader and the market were to come down to this level, then, and you were to ask yourself, okay, in this particular um, is this particular trade going going to work? Well, <clears throat> whether or not that particular trade at this particular level is going to work is going to depend not on whether or not this is true support and resistance, but is the context of the situation applicable to your trading style? So what's your trading style? Well, once again, get, getting back to my four random lines, Okay, getting back to my four random lines, if my trading style were to buy breakouts of those four random lines or sell resistance of those four random lines, I can now begin to put everything into the context of the situation that I'm trying to trying to assess. All right. And so I have some particular rules that I follow. Right. And one of those particular rules uh, yes, I believe lamp post that is being followed. It is being recorded. One of those particular rules is that I always buy strength and I always sell weakness. All right. So if my particular rule is that to make it really stupidly simple, um, if if I look at a chart and I'm relatively looking at, you know, uh, on uh, and, and once again in context, this is the last 20 days. Um, on a uh, one hour chart right if i'm looking at this and you know the chart is in the top right hand corner it doesn't take a rocket scientist to say that currently over the context of the last 20 days that um you know this is a stronger pair based on the, the situation that i'm looking at but it's not really a strong pair is it because if i take a look at a daily well now it's in the bottom right hand corner so it's actually a weak a weaker pair. So if I'm making a decision based upon a daily situation, um, then my daily decision is going to be slightly different than my hourly decision, right? So getting back to context, um, sheesh, hold on a sec, guys. Okay, getting back to this. So if I'm going to buy this particular support level, and I'm going to say, okay, we're going to do a liquidity run up to the highs. Or if I'm looking to see if we're going to do a liquidity run down to the lows, like for example, a lot of the times whenever I see a very large candle, I always pay attention, right? In in the in the context of what I'm looking at here. So when I saw this big candle happening here, 
I would now, my mind would now immediately begin to think, okay, there obviously has been some type of supply and demand dynamic shift. And so now I'd be asking myself, you know, can I get down to take out this liquidity down here? Right? Now that's a totally different context that I'm asking myself as a trader. My thinking is now um, based upon the context of what just happened on that one hour chart. I now start to ask myself, okay, can I get down? Is there enough liquidity down here to go out and, and take out these lows? Okay? Because something significant has happened that has allowed me to shift my thinking to possibly exploit a situation. I'm not exploiting an edge. There's no edge here. There's a circumstance and situation that, that some shock to the market obviously has occurred. I don't even know what that shock is, right? I don't even want to know what that shock is. I mean, I could, I'll get into, I'm going to do a webinar next, uh, my next one on sentiment. I do use sentiment quite a bit, but the right thinking and the right context to be thinking right now is there has been some shift in circumstances that could possibly now, I could possibly exploit a trade from this level to this level for, you know, 34, 35 odd pips. That's the context that I'm looking at. Okay. So, um, you know, now I have to ask myself, you know, where can I exploit this particular trade if I do believe that the context has changed enough to warrant me taking that. Now, personally, because I like to buy strength and I like to sell weakness, I would avoid a fade of this particular situation. But had the situation been reversed, okay, for example, if we were to take a look at this candle right here, right, and we didn't know this was support, right, okay, we didn't know this was support, at the time, but had I had this candle, had this been reversed where I would have seen a large event happen here, I would now ask myself, you know, has in this context, is it worth me trying to exploit possibly getting the liquidity up at this level, which is 81 pips? All right. And so in this particular context, when I have a market that is behaving the way that it's behaving, right? All right, this particular candle right here might, this particular time period right here might be strong enough for me to say, okay, it's worth trying to take a trade to exploit the situation. Now, whether this trade works or not, it's irrelevant. All right, it's irrelevant. What, what is relevant is are, are you thinking in the right context of the situation? So um, whenever you take a trade, the real question you have to ask yourself is not what's my risk, not not what's my reward, which those are important. You have to have certain rules that you set up in order to define that. But in the context of what it is that I believe my particular rules are, those four random lines, and I'm, one of my particular rules is the buy strength and the sell weakness. Um, in this particular context, if I would have seen this particular candle occur, then I might have warranted a trade into that area, right? Now, I have a whole bunch of situations that, that I have personally built around my personality and my trading plan and how I do things, right, <clears throat> that fit me personally. And like I said, uh, for me personally, I just find it's easier to buy strength and sell weakness. So. I wouldn't be looking at this particular context and saying, okay, you know, can I find a short into here? Now, had the chart been reversed and we were down in the bottom of this chart and it, this was particularly weak, then if I were to see something along this lines, I probably would, would try to find a way to exploit it, okay? So um, try to shift, try to shift your thinking away from um, uh, patterns into more of understanding where is the liquidity, 
right? And liquidity is easy to find. You can you can just say support and resistance if you want. Okay, there's more to liquidity um, than that, but just say support and resistance, and then ask and then build a set of rules that are important that, that match your situation, match your per particular personality. Some people love to fade um, and buy high or sell highs and buy lows. Um, I used to do that quite a bit. I don't do it anymore because now I I find that just buying buying strength and selling weakness is a really important concept. And so now I'm looking for the con the context to make trade decisions. Right now, for example, this may quick, go quickly to the Aussie dollar, which is the exact inverse. All right. So here we have a totally different context that I believe is exploitable. Right. And so if I were to see something like this, okay, if I were to see a price movement up and then instant rejection, price move up for an hour, instant rejection, now I've got a whole new context I can start to think of. Not only did we do a liquidity run, and I actually traded this trade the other day. I actually took it long. Not only did we do a liquidity run, we took out all the liquidity here and then we put in instant rejection. Now I can ask myself in this context, okay, where the next liquidity is, is there enough reasoning for me to get short and look for this move down here? Okay? So I'm not really looking at, I'm not really thinking in terms of anything else, but in this context, does this particular trade make sense right and it would because I have a set of rules that says sell 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 weakness and buy strength all right so again I got 45 minutes here and there's like three minutes left and I have barely scratched the surface um, oh an extra five minutes okay thank you thank you mod um, I barely scratched the surface of um, you know of what I'm trying to 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 uh, to get through. Um, so let's just take a look at some contexts, okay? Oh, boy, he's moderating. <laughs> oh, ten more minutes. Thank you, Mod. All right. So let's just let's just take a look at where context begins to make sense. All right. All right. So. I'll give you some examples. I hate doing this. This is one of the reasons why um, I don't like to give particular chart examples because, you know, any guy, any person in the world can look at something in hindsight and be absolutely perfect on it, right? But I, I really want to challenge you not to do that. And this is another trap I find that some people fall into when they become traders. They they tend to look at history. And they tend to say, okay, well, historically something has done something, and therefore it's going to repeat it. Well, it might repeat it. But when you when you take a look at something, once again, from the context of what it is you're trying to achieve, um, yeah, Ellen, you know what? Hopefully, you know, God willing, um, you know, I'll be doing a lot of seminars here on FX Street. I'm doing four, four a month now. So... I guess the best thing to do is just keep coming back and listening to me talk um because I'm going to be I'm going to be beating, you know, the horse what's the saying? beating the the dead horse to death over and over and over again. Um I have some very basic themes around that which you should be trading. Um and I'm just going to keep repeating them and repeating them and repeating them over and over in as as most creative ways I can um over the course of time. <clears throat> um, thanks, Steve. Uh, Emmanuel, I think you need to explain how to determine where liquidity is. Okay, Emmanuel, that's a very, very um, interesting question. Once again, to which there is no uh, good answer, except for you have to um, you have to understand. Um, what the, the market is doing or trying to do and then figure out if it's being successful or not, okay? Because remember, going back to what what's the purpose of a market? The purpose of a market 
is basically to keep moving up and down based upon a supply and demand which is there I'm not denying that supply and demand is there of course it's there right of course there are going to be dynamics that are driving supply and demand but um, you know how is it driving supply and demand okay this gets a, this, I, I want to go off on a little tangent right here okay um, a trader DS do I prefer one hour charts I do uh, personally I find one hour charts I can just see things a lot clearer I do trade five minute charts though okay um, I also use a daily in my thing by the way if anybody wants to follow I'm doing a uh, every day I do a trading plan each minute no sound can everybody hear me check 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 one two three test one two three Okay, thank you. Uh, I do a daily trading plan um, that I'm going to continue to do for a little while, and basically it, it comes up with a bias for the day. Um, so once again, getting back to um, context, let's take a look at how this market is moving. Let's start from August 9th. You know, we have we have a, a quick we have a, a 75 a 78 pip move to the upside. We have a 77 pip move to the downside we have a 45 pip move to the upside we have a 75 pip move to the downside we have a 64 pip move to the upside we have a 108 pip move to the downside um, so we're beginning to see um, a context develop we're beginning to see that this market was oscillating between 75 70 40 70, 70, 100, 75, 100. I don't know what this is, but we're beginning to see a context in which this market was beginning to move. So if I come in to participate in this particular market, what I'm going to think is in this particular context, the market is flowing in this particular fashion, right? So I'm always going to assume, right? I'm always going to assume that what was happening the big context of what was happening is going to continue to happen, right? So how do you find liquidity? That's a very good question. Well, in this particular uh, context, unless something substantially changes on a sentiment level, which is going to be the topic of one of my other discussions later on, unless something changes on a sentiment level, then I'm going to assume that these particular 70 pip directional moves are going to continue to happen right so how do you find liquidity well it's a lot of people say it's support and resistance thank you very much Rod mod um, a lot of people think it's support and resistance well yes that's the most obvious liquidity levels but on this particular context I could have possibly uh, held this trade for a 70 pip move okay now I didn't take this trade on the downside right but as you can see look at this it moves 70 pips because in this context of these 70 pip moves 100 pip on average this is why I use an ATR um, you could have not only taken out the liquidity down here but in this particular context you could have grabbed an extra 40 pips on this trade so had I had um, been short on this trade which I wasn't, um, then I could have used the context of what historically was happening with this price chart to actually make a little bit more money. Okay, now that's a very look. At, that's a very different looking chart, very different context than something like this. Okay, so context is a huge, huge, huge thing. It's not something once again that I can put up put into words, but um, or put into 45 minutes but the context of this particular move was very different than the context of this move or of this move okay so context is what's really fractal in trading okay and I know I'm talking about a lot of, a lot of esoteric and theoretical things here guys and so once again the best I could do in 45 minutes um, to give you the, the theory and so 
the thinking that I really would like you to come away with uh, from this particular webinar is, um, am I thinking in the context of the situation? All right, and like I I I I wanted to to to, to address the situation because so many traders and friends of mine always come to me and they always say to me, well, you know, um, would you move your stop to break even? Would you take profits at that level? Would you would you uh, trail a stop? And again, those are situations that are so contextual that there's no answer to that. Right, because what I might do when a market is doing these types of moves is going to be completely different than what I'm going to do when a market is making these types of moves, or this type of move, or this type of move, or this type of move, or this type of move. Okay, so how do you make up, how do you define context? Well, you have to put it into the situation that you're, that you're currently looking at like so quite frankly um, I was looking for a pullback on the Aussie dollar here and the context was for it to move up higher well that context has changed for me now I'm not I might still look for another move up but the situation has changed from this price dynamic okay now we're getting into much a much lengthier move here so now that context is changing for me, right? And once again, this works on a fractal basis. I'm, I'm using some big pictures here to to help make easier decisions. Um, you know, obviously we're going to downtime, right? And we're going to go to smaller, um, yeah, fundamentals makes those changes. So I only got about four minutes left. Does anybody, again, I apologize to you guys. I know. I'm not really getting very, very specific on very specific things to do, but that's why over the course of all of my uh, webinars that I'm going to be doing here, I, I'm going to try to keep it into try to keep it into a lecture format because there's no there's no way for me to to, to come in here. Oh, four minutes. Okay, I got it. Mod's giving me a notice here. I got to jump off. There's no way. There's no way for me to um, uh, for me to come in here and um, uh, you know say do exactly this or that. It just won't. It just won't happen um, too quickly. So just come back and uh, or email me or Skype me, and um, uh, I'll be glad to answer any questions uh, at that at that time. I, got, I guess I got to wrap it up. Any last quick questions um, before I go? I got one minute left here. No quick questions? Okay, once again, come back for my next webinar. I promise if you guys keep coming to all my webinars, all your questions will be answered. It's just going to take a long time <laughs> because there's 27 years of experience here, guys. It's hard for me to put it into um, into 45 minutes, but there are very specific answers. Trading is not hard. It's just the right thinking. Context is king. All right. Bye for now. Um, webinars. I, I can check my page on the webinar. Uh, I have a page there on the thing. I gotta gotta jump off there though. Just uh, Google or just look up, look for me under FX Street, and all my webinars will be listed there. Bye guys. Hope you enjoyed it.